Today's video is brought to you by Skillshare. Hey friends, Elizabeth here once again with a bullet journal plan with me video. This time I'm setting up my bullet journal for April and this month's theme is a really fun one for me anyway, and that is a knitting theme. I learned to knit when I was a child, probably around seven or eight years old. And I knit a couple things growing up. I knit a couple scarves, worked on some hats. I knit some clothes for my Barbies and other dolls. I also knit some accessories and clothing for stuffed animals, including a stuffed animal I made from scratch. So I had some experience knitting, but I definitely never got to the level of expertise that a lot of people have with knitting. I never got to the point of making a sweater. I never really passed the point of the basics. You know, I could cast on, I could knit and purl, I could cast off and finish a project. Basically, I was really good at the basics. But after I started high school, I just kind of didn't have time to continue with this hobby. I'm sure a lot of you can relate, especially if you're a creative person, you might have lots of different creative hobbies that you're interested in. I know that I have had so many throughout my life, many of which I have been coming back to as an adult, which has been really fun, sort of indulging my inner child and allowing myself to find that joy again in different types of creation. You know, even bullet journaling, while I didn't bullet journal as a child, it has allowed me to get back into visual art, drawing and painting, which is something that I love to do as a child. I would spend some time drawing and painting almost every single day, but by the time I was nine or 10, I started taking dance way more seriously. I'd already been dancing competitively for several years before that point, but that was really when I took it to the next level. I was taking classes every day of the week. I was doing 10 plus numbers in every competition, you know, several solos, duets and trios, lots of groups. I was doing every type of dance I could possibly do every, and you know, pretty much every other hobby with the exception of singing lessons disappeared from my life because I just didn't have time for them. So a lot of the things that I loved as a child, like horseback riding, visual art, sewing and knitting were dropped in favor of more time dancing, time spent on my schoolwork, and of course, hours of reading every week because I could never have stopped reading even if I tried. <laughs> but like I said, as an adult, I've been dipping my toe back into a lot of the hobbies that I kind of put aside as a child and a preteen, teenager, and knitting has been one of those hobbies that has been on my short list of ones that I want to get back into for a couple years now, and I just kept putting it off. I kept feeling a bit intimidated by it. It just felt like too much effort to relearn all of the basics. It felt like it was going to be an uphill battle, but then this year we got some news that someone in my family is expecting a little baby. And I got really excited about having a baby joining our family. I love kids, I love babies, and I am really excited to be around for this child's entire life and be there for them and support them. And I immediately thought, well, I have to start knitting again. <laughs> this is the time I must knit so many adorable baby things for this baby. And that has been the impetus to get started. That was the inspiration and the motivation because now I had a timeline, you know, there's a set amount of time that a person is pregnant. So I have a set amount of time, only nine months to relearn how to knit and finish a couple projects that I can give to this new human. I called my mom, we did a FaceTime call and just went through the basics again. She reminded me how to cast on, knitting, purling, um, just some tips to remember. And we talked about what could be a good initial project for me to get back into the groove of things and to feel accomplished finishing something. So that was really great and it's been really fun. And I'm now finally at the stage where I think I'm ready to start my first official project for the baby, which which I'm very excited about and nervous because I don't want to mess it up, but I have this beautiful dark green yarn and a fun project. My mom made the pattern for it. So I think it's going to be amazing. I'm really excited to 
jump into it. But as you can tell, knitting has really been on the brain lately. And when I started thinking about what my theme could be for April in my bullet journal, the first thing that came to mind was knitting and it just felt perfect. So that is what I've chosen to do. And this one is a pretty simple one. The only art I'm doing is going to be this cover page, a pretty fast and easy setup for me this month. But I had a lot of fun sort of planning out what my little vignettes could be. So what I ended up landing on was drawing my hands, working on a project, and the yarn coming off that project sort of falling down into the next vignette underneath, which is a basket full of yarn and a pair of scissors, some extra needles. Currently my yarn is all in a little box next to my couch, but I would love to get a pretty woven basket for my yarn. So I have my eye out for something that would be perfect. Although honestly, living with cats, I'm not sure I could get away with keeping my yarn in a basket that does not have a lid <laughs> because my cats have already been very interested in this new hobby that I'm doing. They have never seen me knit and Chewy in particular has enjoyed sort of crouching out of my eye line and watching me knit for a couple minutes, you know, letting me get comfortable and feel like I'm safe and then pouncing <laughs> on either the yarn or my hands and the needles. So that's been fun. <laughs> If you're a knitter and you have cats, let me know your tips in the comments down below because while it is adorable, I'm not really sure how to manage that so I can actually finish some projects. And then for the final vignette on the right, I wanted to show a knitted garment on a person. And at first I was gonna do a sweater, but I really wanted something very vertical. So I switched my plan to some knee high socks so that I could do someone's legs. So I'm just drawing a pleated skirt, some knee high socks, and then some sort of chunky loafer slip on shoes. I'm only using very fine nibbed pens for this entire setup. The thickest nib I use at any point is a 005 and most of the drawing and the line work is done with a 003 nib. I wanted everything to be very lightweight, very airy, kind of feeling spring-like. We're on the cusp of spring, a lot of snow has melted where I am and I'm excited for lighter, airier, warmer weather and for some reason the lighter <laughs> thinner lines especially with the curved edges just give me a little bit more of a whimsical spring-like feeling to them so that's what i decided to do opposite my cover page is going to be my monthly calendar and i'm just doing a pretty simple one here all on one page and continuing on with the theme of all my frames all my shapes having rounded edges Once I have all the line work done, I'm going to cut out all my tabs for my weeklies. I use a B5 size notebook. So my tabs are a two space by two space diagonal, four spaces tall on the straight side, and then another two by two diagonal coming back in for reference if you also use a B5 size. I also find this size tab looks nice in an A5 size notebook. It just means you can't fit quite as many vertically as you can in a larger notebook, of course. Once all my tabs were cut out, it was time to start working on my weeklies and I'm still using my rolling weekly. It's been working really great for me. Of course, this time I decided to make each of my daily rectangles very lightweight and airy with those curved corners. So they fit with the larger vibe that I'm going for with this setup and still using my alphabet stamp set for all the lettering. I don't use very many supplies in this video. Like I said, it's a very simple setup, but if you're looking for anything in particular, I will link all the supplies used in the description box. So check that out. If I missed something or if there's a broken link, just leave a comment down below and let me know and I will do my best to update that. Now 
now that I finished setting up my weeklies, all my inking is done, it's time to add some color. And for this one, I really wanted to keep the color light and airy as well, just to really fit the cozy, whimsical, soft and airy vibe of the setup. So I'm using a combination of Tombow dual brush pens and a couple Crayolas to get my color. I'm trying to stick with mostly lighter pastel colors with a couple accents of slightly darker colors here and there for a little bit of contrast, but I wanted things to be, again, light and airy. Starting with some backgrounds, I decided to combine a checkered pattern, a gingham with this knitting theme. It just felt like it fit for me. And I have done a sort of gingham background before. I honestly think it might have been my April setup last year, which is funny. I do this sometimes where every time a month comes around, I'll do a variation on a theme I've done before in that same month. But I guess my brain just associates certain months with certain things. And April is apparently all about gingham. <laughs> so I'm using my Tombow Dual Brush Pen in 990. This is my favorite light beige color to add some checkered patterns to the days in the monthly that are not in April, those sort of extra days, as well as to create a nice subtle border around the entire monthly. I'm also using it to create a couple variations of checkered backgrounds for my vignettes on my cover page. I decided to do a really light version using the smaller nib for two of the three vignettes and then to do a little bit of a punchier, bolder version of the pattern on the third vignette. I wanted these hands to look like my hands, so I used a Crayola that was close-ish to my skin tone, and then I decided to color in my nails with a coral color, not quite as dark as my nails in real life, but I didn't have a marker or a dual brush pen that was exactly the right shade, so I got close. I decided the project I was working on would be a nice neutral medium brown and that my needles would be wooden needles. And then as for all the yarn in this basket, I wanted to keep things pretty neutral and have a smaller color palette so everything would feel really cohesive. So I decided to use tones of brown and pink and yellow that were all pretty light and pastel with one exception. And you can see that sort of darker reddish brown ball of yarn that adds just a little bit of contrast to this pile of yarn. For the scissors, I decided to add in a little pop of green. This is a beautiful sage green color. And I knew I was going to be making the pleated skirt the sage green. So I thought it would tie in nicely if the scissors used that same green color. So it wouldn't only appear once. wanted the chunky Oxfords to be a nice warm deep brown and then for the socks to be a bit of a darker beige so I did use my 990 again for the socks. on to the skirt like I said I wanted this to be that sage green that was kind of in my head from the start that the skirt was going to be green and I really like how it turned out having that pop of color and then it ties in with the scissors there it's a nice counterpoint because so many of the colors I used were warm and within a very narrow color family 
So having that pop of something on the opposite side of the color wheel is a really nice contrast and just adds a little bit more interest to this artwork, I think, anyway. <laughs> I didn't get too carried away with trying to make things look realistic with coloring, but I did add a couple areas with a little bit more shadow just for a little dimension, you know, around the sides of the sock and some shadow on the legs under the edge of the skirt, little things like that. Again, not getting too carried away, not trying to be too accurate with it or too realistic, but just adding those little things that make the art look a little more finished. Speaking of artwork looking finished, it felt like something wasn't quite right when I was done coloring and I realized I needed to add a little bit of a shadow border around these three vignettes. So that's what I'm doing using that same beige Tombow 990, just adding a bit of a border to really ground everything and finish it off. The last thing to do here is to add color to my weeklies, adding the gingham or checkered pattern to all my tabs, and then also just adding a very simple shadow border around each day of the week, just to tie everything together. So that brings us to the end of this setup, but before I do a full flip through of all of the spreads, I wanted to talk to you about today's video's sponsor, Skillshare. Y'all know I am a huge fan of Skillshare, have been for years, will continue to be forever. And as I've been talking about for this whole video, I am relearning my knitting skills, getting back into it so I can knit a bunch of garments for my upcoming new family member and also for all of the pre-existing family members and myself. And while I was able to go on FaceTime with my mom and go over some of those beginner skills that I'd forgotten, like casting on and just basic knitting and purling, picking up a dropped stitch, all of that stuff, I knew that there were some newer skills that I was going to want to learn to practice before I started making some of the more complex patterns I'd already put aside for projects I was really excited to make. And as soon as I started thinking about some of those skills, like knitting with circular, needles, knitting in the round, I immediately knew that Skillshare was the place to go to get what I needed, and I was right. <laughs> when I searched Skillshare for knitting classes, I came across the Take Your Knitting to the Next Level Learning Path, and learning paths are a newer feature from Skillshare that I'm really excited about because they're curated sequential class collections that help you to master a specific skill. This is so helpful because you don't have to search through Skillshare's thousands of classes to find the ones that you need for a specific skill. They've already curated a series of classes classes that you can take to get you from where you started to where you want to be. Each learning path is curated by category. Some learning paths are made up of classes from one specific teacher, and some have classes from a variety of teachers, so you can find new people to learn from, get different perspectives, and really keep you motivated and on track as you learn your new skill. Y'all probably already know that Skillshare is the largest online learning community for creatives and crafters like you and me. They have thousands of classes led by leaders in a variety of industries from film to illustration to design to painting, crafting, music, and so much more. I feel like the last couple years have been really busy and stressful for a lot of us, but I tend to believe there's something really fundamental about investing in our own growth as creative beings, in learning new skills, in trying new things, in pushing ourselves to develop and create. And Skillshare is really the perfect place to do that. You can learn so many different types of skills, finish projects, and find community. If you're feeling a bit overwhelmed, if you don't know where to start, I highly recommend checking out Skillshare's learning paths. They come in a range of experiences from beginner to advanced, so no matter where you are in your journey with a particular skill, you can find a learning path that can help you get where you want to go. Like I said, I'm not an absolute beginner knitter. I do know a lot of the basics, but I never really got past those initial basics. So choosing to work my way through the take your knitting to the next level learning path means that I am pushing myself to learn some of the slightly more advanced skills that I never got around to when I learned to knit the first time. I've already run into a couple hiccups, things I had to work through, problems I had to solve with knitting in the round with circular needles. It's a brand new world, but I'm loving learning from Brandy and I'm really excited about the sweater that I'm knitting along with Brandy. It's gonna be so soft. I love the color. It's a recycled acrylic yarn, which is really great for sustainability reasons. And hopefully you'll see me wearing it in a video soon. 
<laughs> the first 500 people to use my link in the description will receive a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can get started today. Thank you again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. And now without further ado, let's do a little flip through of all the finished spreads in my knitting theme for April. I'm so excited about these. I think they turned out so cute and whimsical. I'm just loving it. So here are the finished spreads. I really like how this turned out. It's very simple for me. It was very quick to put together and it definitely has a lighter whimsical vibe, which I really like. I also find it fun that the tabs have a little bit of variety to them, even though they are all a checkered or gingham pattern in the same color. And I love how the cover page turned out. I honestly wasn't exactly sure if my vision was going to come to life. And there was one point mid inking that I just thought, this is not working at all. I need to rethink everything. But I kept going, I trusted the process and I'm glad I did because I think it turned out very cute and I'm happy. I love it. So I hope you enjoyed this as well. If you did enjoy it, give this video a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you as always to my patrons for your support. I appreciate you all so, so much. And if you at home want to join the Patreon squad, feel free. There's a link in the description box and you can get a printable of the cover page from this setup if that's something you're interested in. My patrons get exclusive printables from my bullet journal setups every single month. So check that out out if you're interested. Thank you again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. And with that, I think I'm going to get going. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you really, really soon in my next one. Bye friends.